Hello there and welcome to Valdis Story, Abyssal City, a Metroidvania developed by Endless Fluff Games, and a pretty good game overall. It's one of my more favorite Metroidvanias because it has an especially strong focus on combat. We'll be getting right into things with the God Slayer difficulty, the hardest difficulty available. The two below it are alternate play modes, a score attack mode and a boss rush mode, respectively. So in this game you have four characters that you can choose from. Wyatt and Vayner here are unlocked from the start, whereas Vladin and Gilda are unlocked after you beat in the game at least once. They each have a different play type, but you can play them in a variety of different ways, not just how the game tells you to. You can play the Caster Gilda as a more melee focused build, for example. We'll be playing as Vayner since there's already been an excellent LP of Wyatt done by DW that I recommend checking out if you're interested in watching a playthrough of Wyatt's campaign. So the game starts with a little bit of story, not quite in media res, but in the middle of an ongoing adventure of this motley crew of various allied individuals chasing after a dangerous demon general. The uh, story in this game isn't really all that interesting, it's very perfunctory I would say. Definitely not what you're here for when you're playing this game. So don't mind me if I don't discuss it all that much. There are some things I like about it, but for the most part, it's a background element, to me at least. Uh, I'll be shutting up for the next while because the music track that plays here is quite nice. A rough landing, but Raina should be just fine. She's a tough old girl. Alright, let's go searching for the rest of the crew. Let's uh, heal up first. So let's take a look at the basics of what Raina can do. She is a monk archetype and so uses her bare fists and feet. She's one of the more mobile characters in the game, having a lot more aerial combos than most of the other characters and is all about hitting as many times as possible in a short amount of time as possible. Now, the fact that she doesn't start with a proper weapon like all of the other characters does make things a little bit more difficult at the start, for reasons that we'll be seeing as we go along. However, on the flip side of things, she is the only character to start with an accessory, one that makes her melee moves significantly more powerful than they would otherwise be. She also starts with a pretty good assortment of magic spells. Spells in this game are linked to souls that you either start with or acquire as you go through the game, with one spell on each of your movement directions, think kind of like Smash Brothers, 
There's down, to the side, up, and in the air. So this here is our first enemy, and as I just showed right there, the main difficulty of starting with Reyna is that she has no easy method of breaking an enemy's guard. All of the other characters can just do their strong attack and it'll be easily broken, but Reyna's fists aren't quite tough enough to do that. She's more of the agile speedster, at least at this stage. And that means you have to rely on magic to break the enemy's guards. Now, as I just mentioned, she does have a pretty good assortment of spells with which to do that. She can break their guard with the down magic spell that we're currently using. Or she can just pass behind them with golden dash, something like that, I forget the actual name. And attack them from behind where the guard isn't going to be effective. So she does have methods of dealing with that, but they require more attentiveness in thought rather than just mashing strong attack, which is what you can do with, say, Wyatt, for example. And that's, I think, why she's classified as an advanced playtype. So here we acquired our first level. That gives us one stat point and one skill point. The primary stats are strength, basically just raw damage, agility, crit focus damage, magic, magic focus damage, and luck, which is a bit of a catch-all wildcard sort of thing. And then you have the three skill trees, combat, defense, and magic, and that's pretty much the same for all of the other characters, those general archetypes. For stats, we'll be leveling up primarily agility, because that goes really well with a lot of her skills, and the combat tree, which is also what we'll be leveling into for the most part. Now, this right here is one of three life potions that we'll be acquiring over the course of the game. Should we drop to zero HP at any point, and as long as we have one of these charges available, we will be resurrected with around half of our max HP. Charges are restored by resting at save points. So here we have a bit of a rude encounter where we're ambushed by two of these demons at once. Thankfully, we do have an ally of sorts, a copy of ourselves that we can summon with our current air magic spell. Divine Decoy, definitely one of the more useful spells early on. Fortunately, that is not the only ally beholden to us. Reyna is unique in that she acquires an assist character earlier than any of the other characters. One of the things that they give you, like the accessory I mentioned earlier, to make up for the fact that she doesn't have a proper weapon. Faulan here is a very good assist. It is more quick to attack than most of the others, and it's very good at breaking guards. So if an enemy puts up their guard, you just summon Faulon, and she'll tear through them with no trouble at all. Now here we have our first leader enemy. I don't know if this has a proper terminology within the game, but that's what I refer to them as. This green aura means that you're locked into the room that they're in until you've beaten them. It also gives them a general strength bonus and makes them overall a bit tougher to deal with. Also, if you touch that green fire above the head, you will be hurt a little bit. Unfortunately, that hurts Reyna's air combat ability a little bit. But because of our dash ability, we're able to dash behind him and deal with him without too much trouble. And getting the respect of this white-haired lady over here. She's not too happy with us overall, thinking that we're an angel. Though we're fighting demons at the moment, angels aren't exactly going to be the good guys here. And the white-haired lady runs off. We unfortunately cannot follow her. We don't have the ability to wall jump. Yet. We also don't have the ability to interact with most of the stuff there. Such as that switch which would operate this door over to the right or the locked door which requires a skeleton key. This is a metroidvania as I mentioned. We'll be coming back to areas with items from later areas to get into new areas. So that's the name of the game. Can't break this wall as of yet either. Yet another thing we'll have to return to once we acquire some new abilities. So. This is a combat-focused metroidvania, but I haven't been talking about the combat too much, so let's actually get into that a little bit. I want to start by mentioning that starting on God Slayer difficulty significantly makes the game more difficult. 
Not just because enemies are given general stat buffs compared to the easier difficulties, but because they're given new moves as well. One thing that this game does on all difficulties is that as you progress through the game, areas will be repopulated with different enemy formations, and the enemies that are a part of those formations will have stronger moves than they used to. For example, the lady demons that we've been fighting have their shield from the start, whereas on easier difficulties we'd have to progress through a few new areas for that to actually be the case. Fortunately, Reyna has no difficulties in dealing with that, as she starts with a weapon buff and magic damage does a lot more damage to their shields than purely physical damage. So she can break through them pretty easily. That's why you're seeing me constantly re-up the god hand buff. Having it active at all times is the key to success with Reyna, at least early on. So, another aspect of combat that's worth keeping in mind, especially when you're playing as the fast-hitting Reyna, is that combo meter on the left side. The more hits you deal without taking damage or letting too long a time go in between hits, the higher the combo builds, and the more experience you end up getting from killing enemies. This lets you level up faster and end up stronger quicker than the other characters. But probably the most important aspect of combat to discuss in this game is what we just acquired right here, the Master Scroll. This allows us to perform a skill cancel which is, far and away, your most useful ability, period. Not just for combat, but for exploration as well as we'll be seeing. Hmm, excuse me. So, the reason the skill cancel is so important is that it lets you do two things. One, you can cancel out of any animation. Any attack that you perform, any magic spell that you use, and even getting stun locked by enemies. And two, the fact that you can follow up any skill cancel with a dash that allows you to iframe through anything. Enemies, attacks they're doing, whatever. Careful application of this technique basically lets you just zoom around enemies and deal even with tricky groups of enemies without much issue at all. To the point that most of the trouble I've been having with the combat up to this point has been from the lack of having any skill cancels. They're so crucial to the combat that even in the tutorial which they've designed for you to go through without a skill cancel is a lot more difficult without a skill cancel. Oh, and as I fail to remark on, the third thing you can do with skill cancels is you can dash downwards onto buttons to open up those doors that we've come across a few times. If I wanted to, I could have backtracked and picked up that treasure chest that was behind one such door earlier on, but the item in that chest wouldn't be too useful for Reyna here. At least how I plan to play her, so I didn't bother. We took a little bit of damage there, so let's quickly heal up. You can access a quick switch magic menu by pressing the magic button and whatever you have as the cancel button at the same time. Handy if you want to switch magic in the midst of combat. And uh, speaking of combat, we have our first boss right here, Azudor, a demon general. Raina is pretty confident about her ability to tackle him. Me less so, but let's see how it goes. So this boss fight starts out fairly simple. It's a one-on-one -on -one affair with an enemy that is only slightly more mobile than what we've fought up to this point. He too has the ability to skill cancel and has a very quick attack chain. He can also guard, which is probably the most difficult thing to deal with as Reyna. Once you've damaged him enough, he'll jump up on that middle pillar and start throwing demon energy balls at you. And this is when the fight actually starts to get truly difficult. When you get him below half health, he'll also again jump onto that middle platform, but he'll also be summoning enemies, and that's not an uncommon trait for bosses in this game at all. Generally, when they get down to low HP, they'll start summoning minions, and that's what makes bosses in this game truly difficult, as the screen just gets more and more cluttered with enemies, each with their own independent movements and AI reacting to you doing all sorts of attacks that you have to keep track of all at once if you want to avoid getting hit. And avoiding getting hit is especially crucial in the boss fights in this game because, as you may have noticed, you're ranked on how efficiently you take down the bosses. You're scored on how often you take damage and how much damage you deal in the midst of combat. 
how quickly you take down the bosses, and whether or not you use any of those life potions. They're free to use when exploding, but when fighting bosses, not so much. Using even a single one will absolutely tank your combat rating. So I mentioned the trickiest part with the bosses in this game is when they start summoning hordes of minions who just start cluttering the screen with all sorts of projectiles. And this is a good example of that. Maybe someone better would have been able to keep track of all that in their mind, but I wasn't able to. And that's why I decided to redo this fight. A few times. See, since the save point is so close by, it's really not all that long of a run to this boss unlike some later bosses. So it's really not all that big of a deal if you want to retry the fight for a better combat score. Now, whenever I do this, I will cut out most of the intervening attempts unless there's something especially interesting that happens, but I have a question. How many attempts do you think this, the very first boss, took me to get an S rank? Two, three, four, no, it took me five. Now, part of that is because I'm not especially amazing at the combat in this game, but part of it is also because really one of my main complaints is the fact that there is just way too much visual feedback sometimes in this game. Mainly during the boss fights, again bringing it up. The just hordes of minions and projectiles that they cause just put so much visual feedback on the screen that unless you're practically a god at fast paced action games, you're probably going to be hit by one thing or another. And that'll just lead to a cascade of you getting hit by more enemies and just tanking your combat score. Now of course, I should qualify that this is really only the case on God Slayer and I guess very hard difficulty as well. On normal and hard, this isn't so much the case because you can actually clear the screen pretty quickly. Enemies are fragile enough that it really only takes a few hits to kill them, even as Raynor. And for that matter, even on God Slayer, this will eventually be the case once we start getting more levels and being able to develop an actual build and start synergizing various skills and gear, we'll start carving through enemies in short order. But for now, don't be surprised if I have to redo boss fights a few times in order to get a sufficiently high ranking. In this case, it's certainly not the end of the world because I actually finished this fight using my focus finisher in a pretty cool fashion. Oh yeah, that looked awesome. Azador is clearly upset though as he starts attacking Reyna as the fight ends. Come on, buddy. So, as some more plot stuff happens here as these feral creatures come in, forcing us all to retreat, let me uh, discuss some of the things I didn't quite have the time to considering how quickly those fights went. First of all, the elephant in the room, that ass score ranking. Yeah, if I end up getting an overall S score, expect it to be composed of an A, an S, and an S. This game is fairly lenient with its combat ranking in that if you get an S in two categories, and as long as you don't die, you're guaranteed one S from using no life potions. And then you acquire an A in the third category, you get an overall S rank. And the combat category in which I at least am most likely to get an A is the time ranking. The S ranks for those tend to be pretty stringent, and unless you do things perfectly, you're not going to get them, at least not early on. The second thing I want to mention is that your overall boss ranking affects what you get as a reward from the boss. How much XP you acquire and special bonuses as well if you score high enough. If you get an A or an S rank, you'll typically get stat or even skill ups which ends up making your character stronger overall more quickly, which is why it's worth going for those high rankings. The third and last thing I didn't get a chance to discuss was focus mode, focus gauge, and focus finisher. So that big ass old meter on the upper left is the focus gauge, raised by hitting enemies a whole bunch. Once you've filled it up, you can activate your focus mode. This immediately initiates an unblockable strong attack as well as giving your character a general strength boost. Depending on what skills and gear you have, you may also receive additional bonuses while in focus mode. Focus mode only lasts so long, but you can end it early by using your focus finisher in a specially strong move, and best used right before the focus mode would end normally. That's what I used to kill Azudor there in that cool, awesome, amazing fashion. 
The last thing worth mentioning regarding focus mode is that its duration is primarily affected by your character's agility. And since that's what we're going to be primarily raising with Raina here, you can bet that we'll be using focus mode quite often. So here we finally reached Atalan's home, the sunken city of Sithale. Filled with all sorts of NPCs we can talk to and get like a single line of dialogue from. You might also notice that the NPCs have a fairly eclectic naming scheme, and that's a result of this being a Kickstarter project. Most of the NPCs, even the more important ones, ended up being named by Kickstarter backers, so there's not really any sort of theming with the NPC naming. So you end up having a Jamie Star, a Chico, and a Barbavoy all within spitting distance of each other. So that aside, Sithale will be acting as one of our hubs in this game, having a few useful NPCs to interact with such as the aforementioned Barbaroi as well as Ziggy here, merchants who offer you items in exchange for other items. That's why we've been picking up so many either from chests or as random drops from enemies. There's no currency in this game, instead you trade various items for actually useful stuff. And that's where we'll be ending things off here. We'll see what Atalan wants us to do with the Elder of this village next time.